Lake Kivu, beautiful, even breathtaking. But on the political fault line where Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo meet, tourism barely exists. And fishermen complain that their fish are small, their catch modest. But under its serene surface, it is known as the exploding lake. Because its greatest resource lies in its depths, abundant methane gas. So we're heading out to the barge platform where they extract the gas. And this was the first site in Rwanda that they've used this modern technique for pulling the methane gas out. And really, it's a pilot project to try and bring in investors. One draw is its simplicity. Engineers lower a pipe several hundred meters to just above the layer of dissolved gas. When a valve is opened, the deep water flows up and the gas bubbles out. It's captured, cleaned and dried and sent to shore. It's a cheap and effective way of creating electricity. This, uh, this lake is our lake. It's free, the methane is free. Why not exploit it and produce electricity? It comes cheaper than using uh, thermal plants or hydraulic plants where we'll have to buy the source, the source of energy in order to create the electricity. This plant could power an average-sized town, the lake itself, several countries. Thanks to the area's volcanoes and anaerobic bacteria, there's an estimated 60 billion cubic meters of methane gas and vast quantities of carbon dioxide in the lake, providing massive potential for energy, but also for catastrophe. What that means is that the deep water gas, if it gets to a certain saturation point, could well up and whoosh to the surface and go into the atmosphere. It last happened in 1986. The much smaller Lake Nyos in Cameroon turned over and blanketed the region with carbon dioxide with devastating effect. Scientists believe that by extracting methane, the risk of a similar disaster here is far less likely. But lenders have been slow to finance methane gas projects. It is uh, quite frustrating because the timeline that we have uh, is not necessarily the same uh, as for lenders, as for uh, developers. Uh, sometimes there are that uh, friction. But in all negotiations and all plans, we try to fast track as much as we can. Potential investors wanted an upgrade of Rwanda's power grid, neglected by years of bad governance and conflict, to handle the windfall. Most of our infrastructure were destroyed, so which means we had to go through a rehabilitation of the existing, which was already at lower capacity. But with Rwanda developing fast, businesses have turned to expensive and polluting heavy fuels to meet demand. And with less than a quarter of Rwanda's population accessing electricity, there's a long way to go. The first major methane plant could come online in 2012. Then Lake Kivu won't only be known for its disappointing fish, but for energy that could secure the future of an entire region. Dave McKenzie, CNN, Lake Kivu, Rwanda.